Mystery of the Irish Wilderness. Fed by great springs, the current and 11 point rivers cut through the eastern flank of the Ozarks uplift. In 1984, Congress passed legislation protecting a 16,500 acre tract between these two famous float streams. Designated the Irish Wilderness, this rugged forested preserve was part of a little known but dramatic chapter in American frontier history. In the 1850s, John Joseph Hogan, a young priest of the St. Louis Archdiocese, himself an immigrant from Ireland, made five separate trips on horseback through the rugged Ozarks looking for cheap land. Today, through the same forests, mounted hunters search for wild hogs. Father Hogan was concerned that Catholic servant girls and the young men who had to work beyond the city on the railroads had no contact. In his book, On the Mission in Missouri, 1857 to 1868, Hogan wrote, the total separation of these immigrants, one party not finding employment where the other did, was in a most anomalous condition, resulting in practically debarring them from intermarriage and from marriage of whatever sort. Hogan's goal was to aid these people to rise from their condition of servitude to ownership and cultivation of land, a settled and permanent mode of existence. With the assistance of Archbishop Kinrick in St. Louis, Hogan acquired thousands of acres in the rugged southern Missouri wilderness. The settlers had several years of considerable success before the Civil War scattered them. My poor settlements suffered irretrievably. The one in southern Missouri especially became broken and scattered. Ripley County, in which my southern settlement was principally located, suffered more than any other part of the state. Native Scotch-Irish drifted back to the Ozarks after the war. Only a few of the several hundred original Irish settlers returned. For five years, Leland and Crystal Payton, authors of The Beautiful and Enduring Ozarks and See the Ozarks, researched Catholic church archives, local histories, and visited lonely country cemeteries to uncover the secrets of that lost Irish colony. Their all-color book also chronicles the history of the region and the career of its founder, John Joseph Hogan, pioneer priest and first bishop of St. Joseph and Kansas City. When I first heard the phrase Irish wilderness, my curiosity was piqued. Being a descendant of potato famine Irish immigrants myself, I wondered who had come to this remote place and left such an imprint on local lore. Surrounded by regenerated pine and oak forest and preserved in local myth, today the site of Hogan's log church is a well-kept pasture. In 1858, Hogan wrote, the little chapel amid the forest trees in the wilderness was well attended. Mass, sermon, catechism, confessions, devotions went on as in old congregations. The quiet solitariness of the place seemed to inspire devotion. Nowhere could the human soul so profoundly worship as in the depths of that leafy forest beneath the swaying branches of the lofty oak and pines where solitude and the heart of man united in praise and wonder of the great creator. Relics of the American pioneer subsistence culture that lasted into the 20th century are visible in the still sparsely populated country. As well as being the best account to date of Hogan's vanished Irish colony, Mystery of the Irish Wilderness is an illustrated history of the place, its settlement, its exploitation for timber, abandonment, and gradual return to nature. Mystery of the Irish Wilderness is a beautifully produced story of a little-known chapter in American Catholic history. It also illustrates how heroic priests struggled to keep the spark of religion alive in the wilderness and helped build the social institutions that were critical to American political and economic development. A lovely book. Charles Morris, author of American Catholic, The Saints and Sinners Who Built America's Most Powerful Church. Leland and Crystal Payton's Mystery of the Irish Wilderness is a fascinating, deeply researched, and beautifully illustrated book. I recommend it very highly to everyone interested in Missouri and Ozark region history, in the history of the Catholic Church on the American frontier, and in the history of Irish immigrants in the 19th century America. Kirby Miller, author of Immigrants and Exiles, Ireland and the Irish Exodus to North America, 1985, and Irish Immigrants in the Land of Canaan, 2003. If not available at your local bookstore, you can purchase direct from the publisher for $18.95, U.S. postage paid, tax included.
You can order with a credit card at beautifulozarks.com or send a check for $18.95 to Lens and Pen Press, 4067 South Franklin, Springfield, Missouri, 65807.